Sianamugela Futsi with Lalam Zansi. Now, if you have just joined us, Awaga Putelo, Sisatlezi, Notando Manano. Now, Tando's rise through rugby rankings while earning a reputation as a tough tackling lock and later open side flanker was astonishingly rapid, especially for a player of color at the time. Within two years of picking up a rugby ball, he represented Eastern Province at Craven Week, and by 2000, he was a Springbok. We continue with the conversation. So, introduction to rugby comes yeah. in. 1995 World Cup comes. Yeah. Where are you? 95, I'm in Standard 9. Uh, I just started the game. In fact, uh, South Africans were, were drawn into the game after the, the World Cup. I was not. Uh, I was drawn up before I even acknowledged that there was a World Cup happening in South Africa, which was in June at some stage, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, it, the, the World Cup just rejuvenated, uh, you know, the the love of the game, I think for me, it rejuvenated uh, if one looked at guys like Joe Lomo at the mm -hmm. tournament. You know, um, you look at uh, Franz Rapina, you look at Chester scoring those four tries. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the, the, the big guns. You look at Zinzenbrook, you know, that drop goal against England uh, and, and, and so forth. So uh, for me, it was just to, to follow on because a tournament comes and it goes and it's the legacy that it mm. leaves behind. And it left for me a legacy that I also wanted to don the green and gold, you know, not knowing that five years from that time, I would also be able to, to call myself and also have my name in the honors, in the honors board in Cape Town, uh, saying that uh, I'm a springbok. And th those are things that you can't erase, you know, as a sports person. Uh, they remain, you know, they're engraved, uh, you know, uh, my life will always go on. Uh, but, you know, I'll leave a legacy behind. So that was for me what 95 was. It was a time when both the World Cup was staged in South Africa and also my rise into the game started. With that 95 dream saying, yeah. you know what, this is what I want to yeah. do now with my life, you then five years later say you get the call up. Yeah. How was that phone call and how did you feel about that? <sighs> Look, I think year 2000 is, is a strange year. Mm. It, you know, you, you read in the book, you know, we found a guy clear that 2000 was a tough journey from PE to Kimberley. Uh, ways in West Ninzi, they change. You know, taking a bus from PE at six, arriving at Bloemfontein at two in the morning, being picked up at half past ten the following day, waiting for someone to pick you up. You know, at that stage, I could have said, you know what, uh, I was already playing for Eastern Province, cut a cup side. It's at home, I've got my own place, I've got everything, it's just comfort. But you always have to push the envelope in life. Mm -hmm. So we went to Kimberley. Uh, I got to Kimberley, I was not even the first choice because of my skin color. You know, what they needed was they needed black, a, a black player just as an add-on black player uh, so that they have the uh, right numbers uh, in terms of numbers at the time for Vodacom Cup. Uh, and I was that numbers, but I was not guaranteed I would start. So for me, it was... It was there, you know, uh, everything playing into my mind. These people, uh, you know, already saying they're just using you for this type of competition and then you go home or whatever they want to do. But for me, it was more than that. And it proved because later in the year I became a junior springbok. You know, I was not even thinking then. I was thinking that now I'm in. I'm a junior springbok, which was at the time it's SA under 23. Mm. Uh, you don't have it anymore now. You have a SA under 20 side, which is now the junior springboks. So for me, I was looking forward to playing in that tournament, which was the African Nations tournament. We had gone to Morocco, Zimbabwe, and so forth. But later in the year, you know, as you say, you know, that call up uh, is when they announced the, 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 the squads, they started with the SA under 23 sides. Uh, my name was not there. And I thought maybe they thought I'm injured because I'd gotten a bump against the Sharks uh, two weeks ago. But when I heard my name being called out on the Springbok, it was not only a phone call. But to hear your name on TV, it's surreal. Uh, you know, if we are Jonga Jonga, there's no one around you to, mm -hmm. to jump into. That was the situation. So for him now, it was a Saturday evening. It was after the Curry Cup final, Western Province mm -hmm. versus the Sharks. Uh, and, 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 and a lot of things went within me of saying, and it's a self-belief thing, you did it. Mm -hmm. And I looked around, there's no one. But for me, what was important is I was not doing it for anyone. Mm. I was doing it for myself. That's the problem is once you start thinking about other people, as I said earlier on, it's a problem. Start with yourself. You know, inside you. Uh, and then you can look at, because people outside are going to compliment you, but you don't know how, how true is that compliment. Mm. 
But for you, you know, it's a hard end achievement. So for me to, to, to hear my name on TV was to say, okay, hold on, I'm there now. Come down, you've done well. The next step now is to again compete with the best of the best at the time in South Africa. You had Andre Foss, who was the captain. You had Rassi Rasmus. You had Andre Fenter. You had Warren Brosnian. You had AJ Fenter. You had myself. It was tough, but I needed to say, I'm there, I've been put there, I've been selected there. First, it's an honor, but mm -hmm. secondly, it means that I must pull up my socks and want to do more. You then get called in as a black springbok. Yes. So you're very vocal when it comes to things like rugby development, things like transformation. Yes. Um, when you, you talk about the Craven Week as well, yeah. I mean, since its inception in 1992, it hasn't come to any of, the, of, of those types. Never of, so went. you're very vocal when it comes to those. Wh where are we in terms of our development here? And where are we in that race for transformation? Let's, let's, let's start with the word black. Mm. I think as a black African, for any person who's a black African in this country and you're not comfortable with your own skin color, you've got a problem. Uh, whether you've been to Iskolos as a Lokshin, you've been to a Model C school, and you're black, the fact of the matter is be comfortable with who you are. That's one. Um, secondly, um, I don't think in 1992 when the sport, when the sport rugby uh, was unified amongst all the federations, uh, it was to, s to, to not include black people. It was to include everyone. So the struggle started in 1992. You, you'll see in the book, I write very critical of our black administrators uh, who, at the time, had wanted a sport, a unified sport, with the slogans then before our democracy of no abnormal sport in an abnormal society. But when we were normal, and we were in a normal society, they backstabbed many of us and many, many of the upcoming players. Where are they now? If you look at the Kolegi Lechalos of this world, the Faj Mabata of this world, where are they now, you know, sitting where and what are they doing? So for me, it's, it's always a case in point that says, black people, you're not on your own, but we need to unite. We need to talk about these things. Because remember, a white person will ask me, but why did you have to put a black springboard? But who am I? Why must I change and say, being a, being a springboard, for whom? Who am, I, who, who am I talking to? So the audience that Nain Teta and I is it audience mm. and it's a black audience and saying you've got your child, you're taking your child to a Model C school, just read so that you have a little bit of background on this sport because Abandwana, when they're cooler, they know nothing what is happening after matric or during high school. When they see a normal world, a plain living world, but things get interesting once you go outside of that comfort zone. So the book is more about, uh, if you talk of, 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 of those things that you mentioned, transformation. Uh, and transformation, I talk, I talk nicely about it. Um, nice, my nice is harsh. I see Bambela when we come to the book, because after the break, I want us to dissect what is in the book yeah. and for you to tell us what one can really pick out mm. and learn from when it comes to the book. So that thought, just hold okay. it there. Now, Tando has arguably become rugby's strongest advocate for the advancement of black people's interest in the sport, and his personal journey reveals why. This conversation is not over yet after the break. <laughs>